All right, so we'll go over the um, savant syndrome. All right, so the de definition of savant syndrome is a person affected with a developmental disorder such as autism who exhibits exceptional skill or brilliance in some limited field, such as mathematics or music. This is from Merriam-Webster um, Dictionary. All right, so the first type of savant syndrome is congenital savant. Um, and congenital means um, born with it. So a person that is a congenital savant syndrome is born with savant syndrome. The second type of um, savant syndrome is accidental savant. This is where an accident can cause a person to actually develop these um, types of qualities. All right, so let's get into some statistics on savant syndrome. One out of 10 autistic persons um, show savant-like qualities. And I'll get into some of these qualities in just a little bit later. And then one in 1,400 persons with a mental disorder have savant-like qualities. So we can kind of see, especially with the autistic um, statistic, um, that it is very closely related with um, savant syndrome. A lot of people that are autistic have savant-like qualities. Um, and then the ratio for males to females with savant syndrome is six to one. So we can also see this is kind of gender related too. And there are different theories about why a person may have savant syndrome. And one with the, um, the male to female ratio is whenever a um, fetus is being formed in, um, in the womb, um, testosterone is flooded in the fetus and this can cause the brain to actually shrink or um, not develop correctly. And the brain, to compensate for this, tr almost tries to rewire itself. And this leads to the different like pathways and how the uh, person with savant syndrome thinks. So we're going to talk a little bit about congenital savant syndrome. So first, I'll get into some of the abilities um, that I talked about earlier. So there are ones such as mathematical, dates and calendar, artistic, and musical. And there are a lot broader range of this, but this is just some of the main ones I've seen and done research on. So can anyone tell me what the answer to this is right now? No. So someone with savant syndrome that has a mathematical ability, this makes easy sense to them. They can easily process this number. It's also 1,854,360,100 I think I said the number right, if you're curious. Um, so this would be something simple for someone with savant syndrome to calculate in their head, but they may have trouble with other things. So as you can see, this is kind of an amazing ability to calculate these large numbers, such as multiplication, division, and like major square roots. Another type is dates and calendars. Um, you could ask a person with savant syndrome with disability, uh, what was the day of the week on January 5th, 1959? And they could possibly tell you, it's a Monday. So that is kind of crazy to think about because this incorporates a person thinking back on this about how each the day of the years shift and then this includes leap years. And actually I have a little exercise. Um, so if anyone would get kind of their phones out, I want you to look up a date for me um, way back. Um, and I'm gonna kind of time y'all on that, if you don't mind. All right, September 30th, 1997. Can you tell me what day of the week that is? Tuesday? Okay, that was, we'll say about 10, 15 seconds. Okay, so someone with savant syndrome could tell you this date off the top of their head with no uh, aids with this. So you have to think about that. 15 seconds compared to almost instant, instantaneously or just a few seconds, that's quite an amazing ability. But that's just how they're, uh, a person, a savant processes information. So next we'll move on to artistic. So this uh, person's name is Stephen Wiltshire. He is um, autistic and he has savant-like qualities. So this is the Tokyo skyline right here. He will get, um, one major thing he does is he gets into helicopters, will look at a skyline for maybe 30 minutes to an hour, come back down and draw the whole entire thing from memory. I can't draw a stick figure really well. And this person, and Stephen right here, can completely go back and very intricately detail this out. So as you can see, this is an amazing ability. Like, savants are very interesting in how they think and these abilities. And so another one is, um, a little bit of poll from the audience is, can anyone here uh, raise your hand if you can play the piano? Anyone play the piano? Okay. All right, I have a question for the people that had your hand raised. Do you think you could play two pianos at once? No? Okay. You think you play two pianos at once if you were born blind? No? This guy can. This guy's name is Derek Paravinci. He is an outstanding savant. Um, he, ha um, 
he was born blind um, with, and severely autistic, but he um, can play the piano like no one else. He goes and plays at major uh, concert halls and everything, and I have a short video to kind of show you um, like his ability. Derek Paravicini is completely blind and severely learning impaired. I'm going to do Flight of the Bumblebee by Rimsky Korsikov. Flight of the Bumblebee. <laughs> He also displays many of the signs of autism. Yet his brain is a perfectly programmed musical computer. What does it mean to be a musical genius in the wake of such a profound disability? Right. Derek Paravinci also has the ability of perfect pitch. He can literally hear a tone from anything. One um, In one of the scenes in this documentary, he was on a train and could specifically tell you the sound the train was making, what note it was. And here's another video that kind of really shows his ability to recreate this. He's never heard this song before in his life. but he's never heard this tune. Okay, right then, find the pedal then. Derek's remarkable talent, combined with mental impairment, classifies him as that rarest of beings, a savant. Thank you. So, as you can see, he, even though he may be impaired, he has trouble with daily life, and one thing they said in that is he has trouble counting to ten. You can see that he has these amazing abilities, and just because he thinks differently, he's still an amazing person, and that was one thing that really surprised me. So next we'll kind of go over like the levels and skills of this. There's like splinter skills, there's a talented level, and then there's prodigies. So splinter is kind of obsessive memorization with like statistics, numbers, cards, and things like that. And a lot of um, autistic, autistic people or um, savant people have this. Next we kind of have talented, which relates back to the musical and art where someone has more of this ability. This is a little less uncommon and the most rare is the prodigies, which are the outstanding ones. So comparing to this, this would be the talented would be kind of like um, Stephen Wiltshire with his ability of having the memorization of the skyline, but also having the um, artistic ability to go back and draw that. And Derek Paravinci would be the outstanding abilities, the perfect, um, the perfect pitch, um, severely autistic, but still being able to play a piano very well. But that relates back to talented and the splinter. He, can he remembers most of the pieces of um, music he's ever played. All right. Next, we'll kind of talk a little bit about an accidental savant. So it all starts with an accident. So brain damage can cause a person to gain savant-like qualities. Um, and it is extremely rare for one of these to actually happen. So some examples of people that have actually had something like this happen, um, three examples are there was a little boy, he was hit in the back of the head um, with the baseball and actually ended up developing major uh, um, savant syndrome and like was able to do art, like sculptures and stuff. Another person um, was farther back was he was actually shot in the head, survived it, and his brain rewired itself and he actually developed savant syndrome too. And the third main one I'm going to kind of talk about is I have a, um, there's a video on YouTube about it. He was attacked um, af um, at a bar and hit in the back of the head um, and developed savant syndrome the next morning. But the one problem with this also is brain damage can also result in other disorders. The next morning after he was attacked, he had OCD, like almost instantaneously, the next day. Um, and so what he started to develop is he developed depression, um, he had OCD, so he didn't want to go out. But the one thing, he's, he started having mathematical abilities. And this included, um, he would see 
um, if anyone's taking calculus, tangent lines and lines and everything. And like with sunlight on the TV, like even looking at a clock, how it moves. It's very interesting that the next day he developed this and how he actually started to um, get over it with the depression was he started drawing out symbols of like how things were. And they're very intricate and delicate of how he does these. It's, it's amazing. Um, and this is how he would deal with his OCD and depression was to draw out all this. All right, and next I kind of want to talk about savant syndrome in TV and movies. Um, has anyone heard of The Good Doctor? Watched it? Maybe? Maybe not? Okay. Well, this is kind of the story about Dr. Sean Murphy. Um, he works at a hospital, and he has um, high-functioning autism and savant syndrome. And so how he goes along, it shows him going along and working in a hospital. Um, and that how he overcomes his social barriers and stuff, um, and then how he thinks is much differently. He can pick out little small things. So visually, like how he thinks, he sees everything in kind of images um, from like medical books, and so that that kind of relates back to the memorization. He remembers most of the books he's ever read and is able to apply this to medical um, scenarios. So I thought this was a, a good representation of it. Um, and then another one that maybe some of the older people in the audience may know about is um, Rain Man. Um, this is, had Dustin Hoffman and um, Tom Cruise, <laughs> that's his name. Um, and so we have um, Dustin Hoffman on the left is Raymond Babbitt. He has savant syndrome. And Charlie, his brother, kind of takes him on kind of adventures, if you'd call it. Um, but he learns more about kind of what abilities he has. Um, he memorized, um, he, um, like in some of the memorization ones, he was able to memorize a phone book. And then whenever they went to a diner, he ran into a, wait a waitress and was able to tell her her phone number that he had memorized the night before. So this is kind of amazing with that. It was a good representation. And another one was they draw, um, a waiter, waitress dropped some toothpicks on the ground and he was able to quickly count them up and tell how many are on the ground. And whenever um, he said like 246, but um, his brother said, no, that's not correct. He said the extra four are in the box and he was correct. And so his mind was able to quickly work and count this. But you could see that it was also a good representation of he had, um, he was severely autistic. So you could ask him, he also was able to answer math questions, but whenever you asked him something about um, simple, like currency, he did not understand something like this. Um, he would say, how much is a candy bar? And he'd say, $100. How much does a new car cost? $100. But he could calculate like um, five numbers multiplied by another five num um, number or digit number together and was able to tell you the answer very quickly. So I thought it was a very good representation of the time, especially whenever people did not understand a lot about autism and um, savant syndrome. Um, and next, I want to talk a little bit about my own personal experience. I met a professor on campus, got into a conversation, and they have a child that has savant syndrome. And he, um, I got a chance to meet um, this, um, the child, and whenever I met him, he asked what my birthday was, and it was September 30th, 1997. And whenever we asked him what day I was born on, it was very interesting. He closed his eyes. It was like he saw physical calendars going by his face. It was able, into about six seconds, tell me the day I was born on, a Tuesday, compared to 15, 10 to 15 seconds to have to look it up on your phone. So this was amazing ability. He also had the memorization um, ability, too, where he could, you could ask him and look at a calendar and point to a date, and he could tell you like what he ate that day, um, what they did that day. So it was very interesting to see, to actually meet someone with it, to just see and do research on this, but actually meet someone was astounding. And I'm glad I got that experience of it. Um, this is kind of my work cited. And then if anyone's interested, here are the, um, some of the names of the videos if you're more interested. Uh, meet the Accidental Genius was about the acquired savant that was attacked. Um, and then develop the mathematical ability. The Musical Genius Autism Documentary, Real Stories, is about Derek Paravinci. I would definitely recommend, if you're interested in that, he, um, watching that. And of course, Rain Man and The Good Doctors, the movie and TV show. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, ma'am? Um, her question was, did I have any previous experience with savant syndrome? I, I actually did not. Um, it was kind of funny how I got into this whenever we were picking our um, 
projects was I actually watched The Good Doctor and then saw about savant syndrome and I'd heard about it before and I had actually met someone with autism before and I think he had savant-like qualities now that I think about it. Um, he was very good at memorization. I, I can't believe I just remembered that now, but that was a previous experience I actually had. I'm um, someone at our church. Um, I knew him, so I guess that connected with the good doctor. I wanted to know a little bit more. Thank you. Any more questions?